Welcome back to Super Soul Sisters. My name is Lona Kasasa Jemima and I'm so glad that you could join me today as I have another Super Soul Sister with me here to inspire you and encourage you on whatever journey that you might be on or you're going through. I would like to encourage you to please uh, comment on all our different social media platforms and also thank Dostash exclusive that is located at Ginger Road. Please come and check out their beautiful furniture and uh, make your home very beautiful at and yes, at a very affordable price. You are most welcome, Honorable Peggy. Thank you. Yes, could you please tell the viewers about yourself? Oh, thank you very much, moderator. Yes. My name is Peggy Joy Wako. I'm a married woman, although now widowed. Mm. And I have seven children, five boys, and two girls, and I have several grandchildren. My eldest son is now 15, and my, young, my last born is now 34. And my first grandson has just finished university, he's now a lawyer, he's 24. About myself, my mother was a teacher. She was coming from the royal family. And at one time, she was the headmistress of Kiwambi Primary School. And my father was a builder. So my mother decided to marry late because she was the firstborn from her family, the family of late Jassy. She was the firstborn. Her mother died at an early age. And my grandfather, who was called Jassy, was a teacher at Muir College of Soga, mm. and he educated my mom. My mother studied at Vuloba Teacher Training College. And when she finished there, she went and started teaching in Chebambi. By then, Chebambi was being run by Bazungu. So when the Bazungu were leaving, they handed over to her. Mm -hmm. And it is where my father found her in 1947. Mm -hmm. My mother, I think, was around 30-something. My father proposed to her. Then my mother decided to get married. Even her brothers he encouraged her that it is high time <laughs> she gets married because she never wanted to get married. Mm -hmm. She wanted to see all her siblings through educated through mm -hmm. school. Until the brother of hers who was following her was in Nyakasura in senior three, he said, no, I'm leaving school. I want to start working and take over the family. Mm. It is high time you get married. Then it is when she landed on my father mm. and they got married sometime in 47. And then I was produced in 1948, first February. Yeah. Like any woman after producing me, mm. she expected to get many more children, but unfortunately, I was the only child wow. of hers. My father was a polygamous mm. man. Mm. Even before producing me, he had some other children mm. whom my mother found at home. And when he married my mother, and my mother was not producing, so my father continued Produce. producing and getting some other women, mm. even bringing them to the house. So I grew up in a polygamous family. Yeah. Although my mother was the legal wife, but I grew up in a polygamous family. I had many brothers and sisters whom I grew with. My mother, I talk much about her because she was my role model. She was a very developmental woman. She was a teacher, as I've told you. At times she could teach, at times the husband should stop her from teaching. At times when she could get her salary, the husband used to take it from her. 
but she never gave up. She could teach, she could do handcrafts, she was very active in Girl Guide. At one time she was the commissioner of Girl Guide in Uganda. So she continued doing some other activities. Mm. By then we had a kingdom in Toro. Mm. And at one time she was a counselor. I think this spirit of being a politician, I got it from her. Mm -hmm. Because at one time she was a counselor mm. in Toro, Ruchiko. Now as I was growing up, I think I was a loved child. My father loved me and my mother loved me. And I could really not sit. Mm. They all loved me. Because much as my mother was very strict, she could at times beat me up. Do this, do that. Mm. But to my father, I was a darling. Mm -hmm. So I, when I was young, mm. I loved my dad more than my mom. Because yeah. my dad was not beating me. Yeah. And my mom used to beat me, teaching me this mm -hmm. and that. So I preferred staying with my dad more than staying with my mom. Now, I did my primary education at a school called High Valley Primary School, mm. which has now developed, it is now a secondary school, but by then it was a primary school. Mm. I finished P6, I passed in the second grade. Mm. I was admitted at Chebambe Girls to do my junior. Mm. I did my junior secondary. Mm. Uh, for two, by then we were doing it for two years, that was 62. 63, mm. I got my junior living certificate. Then I joined senior secondary. At first, for senior, mm. when we were in junior, the headmistress used to rate all schools mm. where you can put your choice. Yeah. And among the schools they wrote on the blackboard, I read one school which was saying Sacred Heart Guru. He said, <laughs> eh, that one called Sacred Heart. Mm must be a wonderful school. I put there my first choice. And it is where I was taken. Yeah, amazing. Going there, I was a young girl. Mm. By then, only 12. Mm. Going to study in Guru, there was no direct transport. Mm. So at the beginning of the term, my mother used to accompany me in a bus. Mm. The bus could go up to Masindi, you sleep in Masindi. The following morning, you take another bus going to Lira. It drops you on the way. Then you look for lorries and pickups going to Guru. Then you take those. So at the beginning of the term, my mother used to accompany me. Mm. At the end of the term, my uncles. Mm. My mother could put fuel. I had two uncles who had cars. My mother could put fuel in their vehicles. My uncles could come and pick me from school mm. and bring me back home. Of course, I was studying there with a girl called Sarah. She was a daughter mm. of the king of Nyoro. She was a sister of this present king mm. of Nyoro. Of course, they, with her also, they used, the king used to send a car mm. to pick her. Mm -hmm. I was also seeing my uncle also bringing a car to pick me. So I used it to feel good. <laughs> Yes. I, I could feel good about it. So before the year ended, my mother said, no, this is too much. I can't keep this girl th this far. Mm. And even me, I had already hated the place. Mm. First of all, the food they were eating, it was only like a posho and beans. Mm. It was so hot. I had was, it was not sacred at all. Life was, it not, was, life was not sacred as the name mm. was. Uh, we had the sisters, the Roman Catholic sisters, they were so strict, which I think was good mm. at that time. So before the year ended, my mother went to Nyakasura school. The previous year, in 64, mm. they had started, they had made it mixed. Mm. Formerly, it was a boys' school alone. Now, in 64, they decided to bring in girls. Then my mother went there asked for a place. Went and saw the Muzungu headmaster, asked for a place. Ah, the Muzungu were good. They said, okay, when the holiday comes, you bring her here and we see her. When they picked me from Guru, I came home. My mother took me to Nyakasura. They said, ah, no, we are taking over. Mm. 
your girl. So for senior two, that was 65, mm. I went to Nyakasura. So it was senior one where you were? Senior one was in Sacred Heart. Mm. Senior two, I went to Nyakasura School. And when I reached Nyakasura, now in primary, it was a mixed school mm. of boys and girls. In secondary, it was a girls' school. Mm. Kiebambe was a girls' school. The first year in Sacred Heart was a girls' school. school. Now in senior two, I've gone back to a mixed mm. school studying with boys. They tease you. They call you names. They do this and that. So the first time, for the first time, I was a bit scared, mm. a bit shy. Ah, but by the time the term ended, I was also... <laughs> bullying people. Yeah, I was also bullying. I had also mixed up with mm. them. This bullying business, ah, I had to go to use it to the environment. Yes. We used to have debate. Mm. We used to have dances. Yes. Ah, I could participate in all activities, both social and otherwise. Mm. So after senior four, uh, I didn't perform so well mm. because by then we had only one university that was Makerere. Mm. So for you to go to ma to to ma go for HSC, mm. you had you had to, be, to have passed so well. In so me, I chose, I wanted to work. I said, I'm not going for HS. So after senior four, I started looking through papers. By then we had a grand August. Mm. I started looking through papers. Mm. They were advertising jobs. I first worked in Kampala here in Amber House. I was a, a, a telephone operator. <laughs> I was first appointed as a telephone operator mm. in Amber House. I worked there for three months. When I was working in Amber Ma House, then I saw advertisements in the newspaper. They wanted people to join the government to work as the committed women assistants. Mm. Ah, I applied through public service. Mm. I sat the interview. At the end of the interview, I was recruited as a community development assistant. I was posted in Fort Potro. I went to work in Fort Potro. I was still very young. Yes, how old were you? By then I think I was 20, mm. 19 or 20 there, 20. All the women who were working in community development mm. were very old women who grew up with my mother. <laughs> they could say, this Kagaru also, this Kagaru. <laughs> this Kagaru also, and me I was young. The first day I reported on duty, they gave me a bicycle to assist me with transport. with transport. Those bicycles were being supplied by UNICEF. They had the sport, they were sports bicycles. Yeah. Ah, I learned it around, around mm. in Boma Ground mm. there, I learned in the evening, woo! <laughs> I rode it mm. and went home. So I worked there at the district. They first left me at the district for, for training for two months. After two months, they, they posted me in one of the counties. By then it was called Chegegua mm. County, mm. which is a district now. Uh, reaching Chegegua, I found there are other workmates. There was an agriculture man mm. by the name of Wako. There was a veterinary man, mm. also was called Iga, and he was there as a community movement assistant. So we were the three officers mm. now in that county. So we used to move together, to stay together. We became friends, mm. not knowing that in the long run, Wako was going to become my husband. Mm. Now, at the end of, that was 60, I was posted there in December, yes. 68, 69, they called me for training at his service. We went, did the interviews, I passed it, so I went to Sami's Training Institute mm. to do a certificate course. I did a certificate course for nine months. I did a promotion exam mm. to become a senior community development assistant. Just as we were there, they were planning to make in Samizi a training institute mm. and start a diploma course. By then, 
a diploma in social work was being done at Makerere. Yes. But now the government was planning to turn in Samizi into an institute and they start a diploma course. They, put, they advertised, mm. I applied. I was invited for the interview. I passed the interview. Then in 1970, I went to do my diploma course. In social work. In social work and social development. Mm. I did my diploma, 70, 71. We finished 72. When I was at the diploma, mm. in 71, we waited with my husband. Yes. Work. When you are still studying. When I was still studying. Mm. Because in that same, before wedding, we, yeah, it was after the wedding, we had had a child, a baby mm. boy. Unfortunately, that child died at nine months when he was doing a diploma. But even after wedding, we continued studying. Okay. Then in 71, I mean, it takes over. Okay. And when I mean it took over, mm. the, uh, the, I'm a man. We are surrounding our, because you know, in Samizu Hill, mm. Mm? it was so high. Mm. So it is where these army men came to put their gadgets yes. to see the enemy coming from Tanzania. So we could be locked up in our rooms, you could see them, could hear them walking mm. with their gunboats outside, we were fearing. Mm. And people here in Kampala were celebrating <laughs> because of you what had been overthrown. You that's were why understanding. <laughs> it was a terrible time for us, I'm mm. telling you. But good enough. We kept hiding ourselves. Mm. Then I mean, it takes over. That was uh, 71, I think. When he took over, ah, we went to his government. We went to his government mm. now. Now, 72, after finishing my diploma course, we were called to come and graduate. When we finished the exams, we went home. Mm. When the results came, you they called to? us to come and graduate mm. at Insamizi. Mm. So I moved from Fort Potro. I, I came with my mom coming for the graduation. Immediately I reached here in the old tax park mm. here, <laughs> in the Kampala here. I saw everybody running. Mm. People were entering taxes, everybody was running, this mm. one going, the other. Mm. Hey! We didn't know what was happening. You were with your we, mom. I was with my mom. Mm. We also entered the tax. We just, going to Entebbe, we just rushed. It good enough, it dropped us at Insamizi. Mm. And one of our lecturers, the late Professor Chomunyogonya, was a close friend of mine. Mm. I was going to sleep at her place. Mm. So when we were there in the evening listening on the radio, it's when we heard that those people, white people were running. Mm. Amin's men had arrested the late Kiwanuka, Ben Kiwanuka. Mm who was the chief just at that time. So we stayed there in some the fearing. Now the following morning, the minister, our minister of culture, was the one coming to officiate on our graduation. Mm. And our minister was called the, this Musoga man, Chamber. Mm. Chamber who was a personal secretary to Obote, yes. to Obote one. The minister had just arrived then a message came calling him that the president needs you. The man who had to leave the function, they had to look for some of our undersecretary, some bodies from the ministry mm. to come and officiate. Kumbe Chamber also, when they called him, they had wanted to arrest him. Ah. But good enough, on his way, I think he. Of course, once uh, Amin called you, mm. you, you knew definitely there was something wrong. Mm. So what he also did, I think he escaped. He was never arrested. Mm. So we graduated the following morning with an official from the ministry, but not chamber. Mm. The following morning, we took a bus with my mom. I went back to Fort Potro. And after some time, I was appointed as assistant community development officer. Mm. Now the title has changed. From community? Yeah, I started as a community development assistant. Mm. That one was a title of those with a certificate. Mm. But now after graduating with my diploma, mm. now I went to another rank. 
I was made assistant community development officer. So he later came appointing me, and they had posted me in Fort Potro. And by then, my husband had been transferred from Fort Potro mm. and taken it home. So I first worked in Fort Potro for some months, applied for a transfer. Mm. I was transferred. I went to work with my husband in Hoima. He was an agriculture officer in charge of Coco. Me was assistant community movement officer mm. in charge of women's programs. Mm. Now what I forgot to tell you. Mm. When I was recruited as a community development assistant, the things we were supposed to do, me I had no experience. We, were, we had just learned them theoretically. Yes. We had learned home economics. Mm. We had learned child care. Mm. Uh, we had learned um, skills making handcrafts. And then we had learned, we, we used to call it literacy, teaching these old people how to read and write. And mind you, I was a young girl now going to work with groups mm, of, old of old people. And all my groups, those women's groups, mm. I was meeting. The women were old. They were married women, mm. old. And he's a young girl. Twenties. Tw in the 20, 21, going to work with old people. Mm. So I had a trick. What I did, I befriended these old women. In any group I could go, I could find who is a very popular woman in this group. Mm -hmm. I befriend that one. Those women I befriended, they are the ones who taught me things. Yes. Even if I had learned these things theoretically, like child care, mm -hmm. making handcrafts, knitting, and what we had done them at Insamizi, but I had never practiced. So these women were, they had more experience mm -hmm. than me. And that trick worked for me. And that was in Hoima when you were there. And gone. that, yeah, I started it from, right from Toro. Mm. Then from Toro I went to Hoima. But I practiced more in Hoima because in Hoima, I was in Hoima from 1972 mm. to 1982. Mm. Ten years. Ten years. I was working in Hoima mm. and I produced most of my children when they were in Hoima. Now when I was working in Hoima, I had my boss. My boss used to be the community movement officer mm. and I could work under her as assistant community mm. movement officer mm. in charge women's programs. Mm. The, my boss would be overall, but me specifically, I would be in charge women's programs. So I became a women activist. I loved working with women. Mm. I loved encouraging them. I started counseling them, those who were having problems in their families, mm. those who didn't know how to look after their families because we used to attend so many courses. So I could counsel them, could advise them, mm. and the women became my friends. How old were you at that time? Around 24, 25 there. Mm. Mm, around 24. And the women you were counseling, were they the same age? Ah, the women were very old, 40, 50. Ah, and they would listen to you? They would listen. I told you the trick I used. Now in Hoima, we stayed there. My husband was working in agriculture. Mm. I was working in the community development. And by then, the district of Bunyoro was mm. so big. It was, we were stationed at Hoima. You could walk up to Kiriandongo, Masindi Kiriandongo was part of Hoima. You could go this side, Kagadi, mm. Kakumiro, Kivale. You could go up to Lisa. Now, by then it was one district. Mm. But as I talk now, there are about six districts, yes. I think. Because Kiriandongo is a district, Bulisa is a district, Kivale is a district, mm. Kagadi is a district. Kakumiri is a district, plus Hoim itself. Eh. So, but now there are six districts. Mm. But by then, I was in charge of, that, of, of that. the whole area, yes. just one person. And at the district, we had only, we had a Land Rover, good enough. Mm. 
we had a Land Rover. The ministry used to give us some fuel. Good enough, my husband had a car. Mm. When I couldn't get the office Land Rover, my husband could help me with his car. Mm. I could drive myself, could go in the villages and work. And, and work was good, really. Mm. I liked it. When I was young, my, I used to see my, my father was an activist in, in politics. Mm. He was a UPC man mm. with the late John Baveiha. So he used to move with Baveiha, going for campaigns. I could hear him talking at night, hey, they threw eggs on us, they did what? <laughs> I didn't know what it was. Mm. Now around 80, mm. in 80, that is when they were going to have elections. These people, so they, they, um, people had come, the rulers had yes. come, the Vinayis had been there, and now they were going to have elections. Mm. I think it was in 1980. Mm. Then with the young people, we, had a, we wanted to join a, a, people, a party for the youth. Mm. And by then, the party for the youth was UPM. <laughs> hey. And you wanted to hey, join? Hey, hey, I joined the UPM. I was the secretary for women. Mm. We had men like the late Impuga. Uh, he was our chairman. Mm. We had a, a certain ADC was called James Kawagambe. He was mobilizing quietly there. He went to the bush with him. He went to the bush mm. and he was killed. He, he died. No, he died after they had come out of the bush. Mm. So UPM. we started... We started our branch mm. of UPM in, in Hoima. Then the seven came there. He was a young boy. He came mm. with his group. He came with the Kakonges and what. They were young boys. Mm. Hey, they came with the Bidongo. Yes. Hey, we danced, we enjoyed. <laughs> we said that this is Prapati. our party. Ah, then time for elections came. Of course, me was supporting some a man who was in the UPM was called Bagambe, Justice Bagambe, from Bihimba. Mm. He's the one he supported, and he went through mm. Mm. with him. He went through, but of course they were not allowed to participate. But he had won according to votes. He had won, but mm. they were not declared, and they were they didn't go to Parliament. Mm. After but had come back. Mm. Then there, we, we feared. All of us who were, uh, who were in, uh, in uh, UPM, UPM, we decided to keep quiet. Because we feared we would either be killed yes. or anything would happen to us. So we just kept quiet. Then around 80, at the, towards the end of 82, now my husband decided he wanted, he's from Kanungu. Yes. So my husband decided he wanted to go back to Kanungu. To Kanungu. After serving Hoima for about 12 years. Yes. So now he decided it was time for him to, to go back. back. Ah, I asked for a transfer. They gave it to me. We packed our things. That was in November 82. Mm. We left Hoima and went to where? To okay. Kanung. How many children did you have at the time? I had the five. When we reached Kanunga, we produced two more, mm. another boy and a girl. Mm. So when we reached Kanunga, I was posted at Rukungiri. Mm. But those days, we, ne we never used it to work because the salary was so little. Mm. There was no transport. Me, instead of going to work in the office in Rukungiri, mm. ah, I went and stayed at home. And, in now, and you became a housewife. I became a housewife, but I was getting my salary. At yeah. the end of the month, I would go to Kungiri in the bank and I get my salary. Yes, government mm. official. Government official. Oh, once in a while, when there could be a meeting, mm. they could invite me, I could go there. There was a CDO man. Mm. Unfortunately, that CDO man who was there, he got a mental problem, he disappeared. Mm. Up to now, nobody has ever known how where he died from, because he just disappeared like that. So when he disappeared, the office remained no. with nobody to manage mm. it. I'm supposed to be the assistant. I mean, we cannot leave my home. Mm. Now there was 
a lady of a lower rank, a committed woman assistant. Mm. She was a senior committed woman assistant. She took in charge. Mm. Then a lot of complaints came up. came up to the head office here. Then the head office said, but we have work there. How come? It she's is this, not, uh, yes. She's not at the headquarters. Let's, let's call her. They sent, the, by then we had a regional CDOs. Mm. They sent the regional CDO from Mumbarara to come to Kanungu and find out why and why not at the district. Mm -hmm. Came, he asked me, you have to go and work at the district mm. now. What did you tell her for him? I had no excuse. I accepted, I decided to move to the district. Good enough. By then, we had, uh, we had elected LOCs. In that voted too, we had elected the LOCs. And when they were electing the LOCs, me in, in my sub-county, they had made me secretary for women. Now they called me to go and work in Rukundiri. Mm. So I left the village in Kanungu. By then, Kanungu and Rukundiri were one district. Mm. Ah, I went and started working, working in uh, Rukundiri. You left your family behind? I left the family behind, but I decided to take my young, the three young kids. Mm. That one plus the, the two. Two, yeah. Those I took them. I went and stayed with them in Rukungiri. I started working good enough. I think it was 86 when they were selecting councils. Mm. Uh -huh. I went to Kanung and I stood for council. For council. They selected me as a woman representative to represent Kinkis County. Mm the district in Kanu, in Rukungiri. So I was a community movement officer, mm -hmm. acting community movement officer, yes. and at the same time a district councillor representing women. women. So I had two. In 1986. Yeah, that was 1986. So I did those, 86. Mm. I did that, 87. I did that, 89, I think, it is when they were going to go for elections mm. again. And now I had to choose. Because now they were saying, if you want to join politics, join politics, join politics you have to leave the government yes. job. So I thought about it. I said, no, I cannot leave my government job. Mm. I left this one of politics. Mm. Another, they selected another lady. Me now I remained as a com mm. an acting mm. community government officer. We had so many projects. We had the UNICEF projects. Uh, we had the INFAD projects. Uh, we had the European Union projects. Mm. So many by then, at that time, so many mm. NGOs were coming in. And being a social worker, I was so lucky. I was a social worker. I was one of the few women at the district. Mm. So each NGO which came, they used okay. to use me. They mm. could pick me mm. to work for them as a coordinate of that program, a coordinate, a social work of that program, a social work mm. of that program. I was working as an assistant community development officer. Mm. And some of my children, two of them, the old ones, they had finished mm, school. The school, they had started working. Then they started posting young boys like my children mm. in, in, in my office. I said, eh. Now these ones are like my children. Mm. Am I going to work with these children? And the man I'm getting here is not enough. Mm. Mm? I have, I had four children in secondary school. Yes. I didn't have enough money. Ah, I, I said after all, I've been in government service for a long time. For a long time, 25 years. Mm. And when I read the rules, I qualified. I qualified to, to retire. Mm. So he asked for another retirement. In 1997, I retired, retired. from government. Mm. I started doing my things. Now I went into business. Ah. Now I went into business. Mm. I opened up a, a shop in Rukungiri. What, what was in the shop? In the shop, was, at first I was selling. I started with clothes. Mm. Those never worked well. Then I went to cutlery. 
spoons and yeah, 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 spoons, plates mm. and so on. When I was there, by then NRM had already come. Mm, yes. Now we are in NRM mm. third car. So I was no longer active in I had left the other time I had left politics yes, because I was in because government. Of the government. Uh, yes. Now we start now you're not in now again. Yes. I started being active, campaigning for my friends. At one time, one of my friends became chairman mm. in Rukungiri. We started a circle. We are serving people in Rukungiri. Mm. We developed our market. Ah! That's amazing. Uh, now, as I was there, uh, we got a district. Kanungu now broke off mm. from Rukungiri. Now, when Kanung became a district, I think it was around the 2002, 2000, 2001 there. And then 2002, we elected our own district yeah. officials. So when we got our own district in Kanung, and they had already retired from the government, mm. then the, the Kanung local government, they appointed me as a commissioner on the district service commission. Wow. That was 2002 mm. to 2006. I was a member of the commission. Yes, I'm going to stop you right there. We are going to dive still more into her, polit her political life, as uh, Honor Bohi has been telling us, and also we'll hear more about her personal life after this brief short break please stay tuned i am here with honorable peggy who has been telling us her journey to parliament which has been very educative and uh, that journey was also very uh, full of challenges as she was a mother at the time a wife and she still had her own ambitions that she had to aspire to and that she wanted to reach to but as we continue to listen into her story i would like to remind you to please continue to comment on all our different social media platforms we really appreciate that and we also appreciate doshta's exclusive which has hosted us here uh, please come and have a look at its uh, beautiful comfortable furniture that can make your home not only elegant, but also very comfortable. Yes, Honorable Peggy, in, from 2002 to 2006. Yeah, 2002 to 2006, mm. I, I told you I was a commissioner. Yes. I was a member of the District Service Commission of Kanung District. Yes. There, I was not active in politics. Now, after finishing my term, mm. after 2006, 2011, I joined politics again. How did you join politics? Now I joined politics. They were electing. Mm. The, the, by then, NR, I was a member of NRM. Mm. And they used to have leagues, women's league, youth league. Mm. And uh, 2006, they started a league for old persons. So I joined on the ticket of old persons. Mm. That was 2006 to 2011. And, and, and and so I was elected right from the village level to the parish, to the sub-county. And when we reached the district, five of us members at the district level, we went to compete in Imbarara mm. at the region. And when we reached Imbarara, we were western region, the older western region. Mm. I competed with very many others. We are, by then elections used to be in Nambole here. Mm. So 2011, Local. I was elected as a, I came as a delegate. First of all, I came as a delegate for my district from Kanungu. When we reached here, we went to our regions. Hmm? Yes. When we reached Nambole, we could go to our regions. Now each region had to elect a vice chairperson that vice chairperson would be a member of the National Executive Committee of NRM. Uh, uh. So it so happened, I competed. I had come from Kanunga, I competed in 2011. I competed with others. I was elected as the vice chairperson 
of NRM League at the national level. Yes. That one qualified me to okay. be a member of the executive, mm -hmm. NRM, NIC, National Executive Committee. I was representing Western Region as a vice chairperson. We had another vice chairperson from Eastern. We had another one from North. Four regions mm. were all represented and formed an executive. Mm. We elected a, cha a chairperson, a vice, a treasurer, a secretary, plus committee members. So I happened to be a secretary of the national level yes. of old persons. Now there, we started advocating for old people. Old people were being neglected. Mm. Old people had no say. Mm. Old people had diseases and what they were not being catered for. So mm. those were the issues we used to talk about among ourselves. So one time, me and our Honorable Minister, Minister Gidudu Mafabi, mm. we decided to go to the Ministry of Gender and advocate, and advocate for all the people. Mm. The people in the Ministry of Gender also were good. Mm. They started thinking about it. They started calling meetings until when the ministry came up with an idea of writing an act, hmm, a bill, yes. which would be presented to Parliament. Yes. Ah, with us, we gave in our ideas. With them, we left them with their technical know-how. They had the lawyers, what not. Now, 2016, the act was ready. When the act was ready, it was presented to Parliament. It, that act was started, they wrote that act in 2013. Oh, wow. Three years act, later. Yeah. From 2011, they wrote it in 20, it was approved in 2013. Mm. So it, it is called Old Persons Act of 2013. 13. Now Parliament had approved it. Mm. So we started looking now how we are going to have structures for old persons. Mm. We said we can, if we are to have structures, we need to have councils mm. for old persons. We started as NRM League for old persons. Mm. Now we advocated for councils for old persons. So it was approved mm. in Parliament. Uh, we, had, we went around telling people, people started forming councils. Mm. 2016, we had councils for old persons right from the parish level yes. up to the national level. After we had been sworn in, we went, the ministry prepared for us to go and celebrate International Day for Old Persons. It was to be celebrated in Padel. When was, when, which day was October. that? 1st October. Yes. That was 2016. Mm. The day was going to be celebrated on 1st October. Mm. So we as a, a secretariat, we went with our members to the celebrations. When we reached the Padel, mm. we had written our speech. And in our speech, we, we requested the president for two things. One, to have representation in, in parliament. Yes. Two, to give us a fund mm. which could cater for, for old, old persons. People. Of course, uh, government had, uh, the ministry had already started a program of SAGE, mm. they were, but they were doing it on pilot project. As a pilot project, they could every year, they were working in five districts. Another year, they had on five districts. districts yes. Then the whole country was not covered. But then with us, we said, eh, when will they cover us. the whole country? Mm. But they said it was not possible. So when we told the, we told the president with us, we want to be represented in parliament. Mm. And we want you to assist our old person. Mm. Then the president said, I'm giving you 10 billion to start with. To start on that. Uh, to start on that to help the old people. Yes. And in parliament, I've given you slots to go to parliament. Mm. With us, we had wanted eight slots. But when they sat there in the parliament, Standard. they decided to give us five. Yes. So we had our, ch our chairman of SEC. Mm. That is the Honorable Gidudu Mafabi. Mm. We kept following, following. In fact, we are so grateful to write Honorable Kadaga. Mm. He presented it in Parliament, and within less than three months, mm. 
we were given our five slots. Yes. And what pleases me most mm. is to see that we have succeeded. We now we are now presented, represented in parliament. Yes. We are now talking for our old people. Mm. The SEG program at first was for five districts per year. With us, when we reached parliament, we said, no, we want it to cover the whole country. Mm. Now the SEG program covers the whole country. But when it covered the whole country, they said, you are too many. We cannot reach everybody. <laughs> they increased the years from 60 to 80 years. Yes. We said, OK, we went to the president. He gave us our other money, the, the 10 billion. Yes. We said, OK, those from 60 years to 79, mm. they form their own group, we call it SEGOP. Yes. In that SEGOP, they get five million per group, yes. and those who are eight and above, they get SEGE. Yes. Those below, they get SEGOP. Then, PDM came. Mm. They hadn't considered about the, the old people. Yes. And we in parliament, we said, no, you have to include the old people. Old people. They had to go back to the drawing yes. table. Then old people were given 10%. Yes. And right now, the Mioga program we are left out, but we are still struggling. Soon, you'll hear an announcement that all the people also should benefit yes. from the Mioga program. Amazing, very inspirational mm -hmm. to know that you have been your entire life, mm -hmm. you've, present, you've represented women, yes, please. and now you're representing uh, old, old people. Yes, please. yes, that is very inspirational. We're going to take a short break and we're going to hear uh, final remarks from Honorable Peggy. Uh, please stay tuned. Welcome back to Super Soul Sisters. I'm so glad that you have stayed tuned till this final moment. Honorable Peggy has taken us through her entire political journey, which has shown her determination to represent the people that she is concerned about. Now, Honorable Peggy, uh, you've told us all about uh, your political journey and how you've been able to reach where you are. Could you tell us some of the challenges that were in your journey as a mother, as a wife? Because there was a lot of movement, but then you still had commitment to still represent the people and to still honor your career. I think I'm one of the very lucky people mm. because my husband supported me. Mm. My husband supported me in my work. My husband supported me in politics. It's unfortunate I lost him in 2017. Mm. But all along, he had been supporting me. At one time, I was going for a course in Britain. Mm. I left him with a kid of six months. Ah. And he looked after that kid. Mm. He's now a big man. Mm. So even in, the, in my political career, my husband was supporting me. So, really, I don't remember. Because with other people, you see, the, the, the society around, they could talk, they could do mm. what, but I had the support of, your husband. of my husband, mm. so I never used it to mind about yes. others. The, what is some of the advice you'd give young girls who are now 20? You said you didn't have a chance to, you started working after S4. Mm. So, and I'm sure there are very many girls like that, especially after COVID now. What are, some, what, what are some of encouraging words you'd give them, maybe advice? What I would advise young girls, mm. the moment you decide to marry, mm. you respect your husband. And whatever you do, you bring it back to the table. For example, me and my family, my husband used to tell my children that your mother is the treasurer here. Mm. Whatever money I made, whether in a business, in politics, so where I could put it on the table and we planned together. Mm. So it never brought us conflicts. But what is spoiling homes these days? The woman wants to keep her own money. Mm. The man wants to keep his own money. There is no transparency. And as such, they get a lot of problems. Mm. Me, my husband was supporting me, as I told you, right from the beginning until the time he left me. Mm. He really supported me. Yes, mm. thank you very much. Thank you, our viewers, for staying tuned. That has been a very educative journey as she fought for old people and she's still fighting for old persons in Parliament. 
today. I hope you've been inspired and most importantly, educated to, uh, to help out on your parents. I'm sure you have so many old persons that could be benefiting from this project and program. Uh, thank you for those that have left comments on our different social media platforms. I cannot wait to hear from you. Until next time, have a blessed evening.